Chair recognized the Honorable Member for Cat Island, Rum Key, and San Salvador. Thursday, the 30th of April, 2015, I announced the selection of Power Secure International, Inc. as the preferred bidder to manage the new BEC, both generation and transmission distribution for a period of five years, subject to the negotiation and finalization of the management contract the major terms of which have been agreed. This decision was taken in consideration of the unanimous recommendation of the task force appointed to review the proposals and its financial advisors, KPMG Advisory Services, its technical advisors, DNVGL, and as a result of an extensive, robust, and patient requests for proposal process. Mr. Speaker, the National Energy Policy 2013-2033 identified six priority areas to guide us to sustainable energy reform. The cited areas are security of energy supply, through diversification of fuels, modernizing of the energy infrastructure, development of renewable energy sources such as solar, ocean energy, biofuels, waste to energy, and wind, energy conservation and efficiency, development of a comprehensive governance regulatory framework to protect the consumer, effectively support the advancement of the energy sector, and to facilitate the introduction of renewables and the diversification of fuels. And, Mr. Speaker, lastly, eco-efficiency in the manufacturing, agricultural, and tourism sectors, and government as leaders in energy conservation and the use of renewable energy. Mr. Speaker, a key step toward reform is the restructuring of, Bahamas, of the Bahamas Electricity Corporation, BEC, to create efficiencies which will allow for significant reductions in the cost of energy, reliability of service, increased energy security, and environmental responsibility. All of these will assist the Bahamas to meet the articulated goal of a modern, diversified, and efficient energy sector, which provides Bahamians with affordable energy supplies, thereby enhancing our international competitiveness and sustainable prosperity. We are well <coughs> on the road to fulfilling our charter for governance commitment toward ensuring a positive bottom line effect on the pockets of the average Bahamian and business owner. We have taken very deliberate steps to get to this point. The amendment to the Bahamas Electricity Act, which we delivered earlier this year, was critical to what we do now. Mr. Speaker, the RFP for the management of BEC was issued in August 2013 and advertised widely in the Bahamas and internationally. From the RFP, we sought to ultimately identify a suitable company to manage all functions of the existing BEC under a new structure. That company would, to the extent required, bring access to capital for investment in the generation side of the business as a partner to the government. <laughs> Further, the company would assist us in addressing the significant legacy liabilities of BEC 
totaling more than $450 million in an efficient manner, facilitating BC's capacity to invest in much more needed new equipment. These legacy liabilities include bank debt and bonds, overdue payables, a deficit in the pension plan, and environmental liabilities not yet quantified, as well as restructuring costs going forward. As the process evolved, taking into account the various challenges, in particular the issue of restructuring the large amount of legacy debt, the structure was adjusted such that the relevant assets, including land, excluding land, and business of BC would be transferred to a single entity, the new BEC, and government itself would procure offers for the refinancing of the legacy debt. Mr. Speaker, it is important to note the key components that brought us from that initial 13 bidders of August 2018 to this point. By the 13th of September of that year, Nine bidders submitted technical proposals. Three of the bids were rejected. By the 15th of November, five of the remaining bidders submitted pricing proposals. And on the 24th of December, each were asked for further particulars of their <coughs> proposals. On the 31st of January 2014, four bidders submitted revised pricing proposals. Each of them, in February and March of 2014, made presentation to the task force that included representatives of the Office of the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Works, Ministry of Environment and Housing, the Attorney General's Office, along with the government's advisors. From April to July, the task force and the government's advisors undertook a detailed assessment of bid proposals and alternatives put forward by bidders. In accordance with the process, the task force made recommendations to Cabinet on the next steps and for the refinancing of the legacy debt. On the 29th of August, 2014, three bidders were invited to a final round of evaluations. These evaluations included site visits by a government delegation to better facilities over the period September to November 2014. Negotiations on the management contract terms were pursued in earnest and finalized during November, December 2014. Mr. Speaker, when the government set out in pursuit of a manager for BEC, we were firm in the criteria for the preferred bidder. We sought out the company best able to extract value from the existing new Providence Generation <coughs> assets, including advanced asset management, efficiency retrofits, improved operating schemes, fuel selection and purchasing schemes, effective supply chain, emergency response planning, preparation and execution, and training employees in proper maintenance techniques. As well, the company had to have <coughs> the ability to manage the building of a new major generation in New Providence, including objective development and financial evaluation of options, design and engineering capabilities, managing construction on time and on budget, operating the selected option, and optimizing fuel source for the selected option. Further, the company had to have the ability to extract value from existing assets on the family islands, including advanced asset management and fuel selection and purchasing schemes. In respect of <coughs> both New Providence and the family islands, the company had to have the ability to procure and or manage <coughs> the building of renewable energy projects supplemented with selective replacement of fossil fuel plants, including control schemes and integration system design, 
small fossil fuel installation experience and renewable generation experience. We also determined that the company must have the ability to improve the availability and reliability of the transmission and distribution <coughs> systems to improve efficiency through state-of-the-art asset management, planning for system and capacity expansions to meet new and increasing loads, use of live line maintenance and construction methods, effective supply chain, emergency response planning, preparation and execution, and as I said before, training of employees in proper construction and maintenance techniques for line and station work. We deemed it necessary that the company demonstrate its ability to effectively manage the customer services functions, including advanced metering infrastructure, to include prepaid metering, the ability to detect theft, and the ability to remotely disconnect and disconnect power. Other modalities would have included effective management of the bill rendering cycle, the collection cycle, and efficient management of service requests, and the call center function. The success of any company is commensurate, Mr. Speaker, to the efficiency of its staff. It is therefore an imperative that the company commit to proactive management relationships, including employee and union relations and community interface. This commitment requires the incorporation of a health and safety program to include safety rules and policies, energy control, switching and tagging functions, safety training, and field audits of work. While these were the overarching criteria for the RFP, <coughs> it is a given that the company must align with and support the realization of government's national energy policy goals and objectives, and set out an overall strategy for sustainable cost reduction without compromise to reliability and the environment. The company is also required to be equally sensitive to the diverse needs of the family islands and articulate a strategy to meet those needs. Mr. Speaker, Power Secure, a public company in the United States of America, is traded on the New York Stock Exchange, which is regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Extensive information concerning its ownership and activities is available online for any interested party. However, I am pleased to read its credits into the record of this House. Power Secure is widely held with no single controlling shareholder. Headquartered in Wake Forest, North Carolina, it has total assets of 265 million, shareholders' equity of 157 million, trailing 12 month revenues of 283 million, and for the period the 31st of March, to the 31st of March, 2015, and market capitalization of $318 million, that is, as of the 11th of May, 2015. It has grown considerably over the last several years, posting an, on average over a 25% compound annual growth rate. In addition, based on its most recent investor presentations last week, it holds a strong contract backlog of $402 million. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, since January 2014, it has announced more than $400 million in new business. As of the 15th of March 2015, it was 95% owned by institutional and mutual fund owners. The company's largest shareholder is Wellington Management Company, an investment manager, manager with $900 billion under management. Other notable shareholders include Dimensional Fund Advisors, SRB Management, BlackRock Fund Advisors, Vanguard Group, 
AWM Investment Company, Becker Trapkin Management, and other major, primarily US-based institutions and funds. Mr. Speaker, Powell secures 33-year energy veteran and founder, Mr. Sidney Hinton, continues to serve as its president and CEO. Prior to the establishment of Power Secure, he worked for Carolina Power and Light, which is now Progress Energy, Southern Company, and Georgia Power Company. Under his leadership at Power Secure, close to 1,000 employees across the United States operate and maintain one GW of distributed generation capacity. It reported 98.4% reliability for these systems in 2014, which is one of the best in the industry. Its three-pronged operations take in utility services, that is, engineering and infrastructure solutions, power generation, distributed, which is distributed energy and soil installation and management, and energy efficiency, including production of its <laughs> own LED lighting systems. The company serves many of the largest utilities in the United States. Power Secure specializes as well, Mr. Speaker, in utility scale solar power through its subsidiary Power Secure Solar and has provided both solar and storm hardening services to multiple utility customers. Of particular note, it, its efficient mobilization of resources for every named storm in the last five years. As recently as January this year, it mobilized utility support during the severe winter weather and snowstorms in the northern United States. It also performs rate and cost of service analysis studies and an entire array of system studies using latest technology. It has completed hundreds of projects for utilities industrial and government organizations and other specialty clients. Mr. Speaker, the company's power services and generation group has a team of managers with significant investor-owned cooperative and municipal utility managerial experience. As utility directors, senior engineers, and senior VPs of engineering, power services provides traditional electrical engineering services to electric, electri electric utility clients and others. This government has never questioned, Mr. Speaker, this government has never questioned the qualification and capability of BEC's management and staff. We are keenly aware members, of material challenges. Honorable members. With this in view, we are confident that the Power Secure team, in consultation with the experienced engineers at BEC will collaborate effectively to plan, design, procure, and construct generation, transmission, distribution, substation projects, and utility communication projects for the new BEC. <laughs> Power Secure's Utility Engineering Division provides engineering project and construction management and quality control services for turnkey design build, utility infrastructure projects, along with testing and commissioning for an array of power delivery and smart grid systems. Its team has completed projects for private and public entities, including the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Air Force, Department of Veterans Affairs, NASA, and both large and small industrial clients and utilities. Mr. Speaker, the selection of the new manager <coughs> is the primary step in the overall restructuring of BEC and reform of the energy sector. We have, we have now turned our attention to the next steps, which include the finalization of the management contract with Power Secure. At the same time, we are in the process of establishing a transition committee as per the agreement. This committee will consist of well-versed business and technical persons. The business plan will be a contractual document 
once approved by the board of the new BEC, and the quantum of the management fees will be tied to meeting the targets set out in this business plan. The task force is also in the process of considering and recommending on several robust proposals submitted by world-class banks to raise monies by way of a rate reduction bond to retire the legacy debt. In the near future, we also expect to enter into a rate reduction bond mandate with a preferred bank for the re refinancing of the legacy liabilities without a government guarantee, as well as providing monies for the working capital and other needs of the new BEC. At the satisfaction of these requirements, government will, ta will table legislation to establish a new BEC, transferring the operating assets and certain liabilities from the existing BEC to this new company. That legislation will establish a completely new and non-partisan board to oversee the management contract and operation of the new BEC. With, the, with its credits, the government of the Bahamas is satisfied that Power Secure has the technical, operational, and financial capacity required to manage the new BEC. Mr. Speaker, we sincerely thank those bidders that were not selected for their broad engagement, contribution to the process, professionalism, and patient tolerance of the process. We especially thank our technical, we especially thank our technical and financial advisors and the government of the task force have all undertaken extensive due diligence on the existing financial and operational conditions at BEC, the various bidders, and all of the options put forward by those bidders. With confidence, Mr. Speaker, we now look forward to the establishment of the new BEC under the supervision of Power Secure. As promised, we are well on the way to delivering to our constituents a 100% Bahamian-owned, world-class electri electrical utility offering its customers affordable and reliable power and a tremendously improved customer service. As the transition unfolds, I commit to bring further updates to this House. In the meantime, we encourage all stakeholders to remain steadfast in their work toward the goal of more efficient, more reliable service at a more cost-effective rate. Thank you, Mr.